All right, so I've got a lovely cold, not the koof koof, but just a cold. And uh, I, I'm, I wasn't gonna make videos, but this Kyle Rittenhouse case is so stupid at this point. I, I um, it's, it's, this is going on my main channel because we are out of political territory into bad computer science territory. They're talking about image interpolation, for God's sake. Image interpolation. <clears throat> and whether or not interpolating an image, enlarging it with pinch to zoom on an iPad, does any kind of modification to the image, does it add information, does it modify it, does it put things there that weren't before, because they want to show, like, they want to expand like a three pixel wide hand to show that he was pointing a gun at someone. Well, no, that that's stupid. That's not going to work, because the problem is you can't enlarge an image with any method other than what they call nearest neighbor without adding data to it. The way that it works is it looks at neighboring data to fill in the gaps. Um, in fact, every pixel in a resized image that is not an integer done with nearest neighbor, integer scale factor done with nearest neighbor, <clears throat> all pixels are generated from the source pixels. And I made a simplified diagram to show this to you. The reason that nearest neighbor is the only one that doesn't add data, that manufactures data based on blending the existing pixels. So here's my ugly drawing, and I'm, I've not done this with this camera before, so you know this this may not work out all that well. But um, basically, with the uh, light working against me here, nearest neighbor takes this pixel, the source pixel, and this is a scale factor of 2.0, so you see it doubles pixels in both vertical and horizontal. So an image that's like two, two by two would become four by four, just as one example. Um, nearest neighbor here, let me turn up the brightness on this so you can just see it even if I cover it up. Nearest neighbor uses an integer scale factor and it just takes one pixel and copies it. So you just see a bigger, blockier version of the same exact picture. By linear and every other method that is better than bilinear interpolation works by taking all of the neighboring pixels and using those neighboring pixels to calculate the target pixel. So when it scales up, it takes portions of neighboring pixels to make it bigger. It, it does not do a direct copy like n uh, nearest neighbor, but instead it's doing math to take all of the pixels from the source and the pixels from the destination size, it takes fractional pixels and cuts it up depending on you know how big it's going. Like if it's going from 1,000 to 1,500 pixels, that's a 1.5 times scale factor just for simplification. So it would take one pixel in the source equals one and a half pixels. Well, that means that it for two pixels or for three pixels in the destination, you've got. Um, one and a half of the source pixels. So it, it expands it out by calculating fractional pixels and that means that all of the data in anything other than nearest neighbor is guessed at based on the source data. It is the source data expanded. Now if you do anything other than bilinear, like they have by cubic, and I'm probably too bright and out of focus, <clears throat> they have by cubic interpolation, Lanczos, Sync. There's all kinds of different ways, but by cubic, by linear, Lanczos three typically Lanczos three, and Sync are the ones that you see most often in imaging software. All of these methods of interpolation that aren't nearest neighbor work by merging pixels together. The only difference between them is how they decide to merge the pixels. You're still going from a source set of pixels to a target set of pixels and the algorithm just determines how it does the blending. So one might do blending where um, it's a two-dimensional sort of fractional pixel and it, it tries to smooth it in a different manner so that, for example, diagonals, if you think of it um, like a circle around the target pixel, diagonal pixels technically are a farther distance from the target pixel than pixels that are neighbors direct neighbors. So uh, an algorithm might take that into account and calculate the diagonal pixels less strongly, basically bringing in pixels you know, based on distance too. But the point is that any method other than nearest neighbor automatically, just look at it, look at it, automatically is invalid as far as 
you know, whether or not what you're seeing is genuine. And they used an analogy yesterday when this was first brought up, which also kind of pissed me off, talking about a magnifying glass. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, look, <clears throat> you really want to see the difference? Take the magnifying glass to the screen. Then, today, when they're arguing about the interpolation, oh, well, it looks better on this 4K TV. The 4K TV displaying the thousand something pixel wide thing on a 3,840 pixel wide TV, the 4K TV is internally doing interpolation and possibly even AI upscaling. See, AI upscaling goes a step further and tries to look at, say, say you have a curve, right? And this is what like Apple stuff will do too. Say you have a curve, right? It gets rasterized, it's very small, it becomes, you know, a chunky pixel, a chunky pixel, a chunky pixel, and some other, you know, aliasing pixels. But it gets blended into a set of squares. Basically, the squares have one set color. It gets blended together, and it basically becomes this weird-looking chunk diagonal thing that it looks like a stair step at the pixel level. What AI software will try to do is find what looks like curvature and it will smooth it out in a way that results in a curve. So it's actually guessing based on more than just those pixels, it's trying to be more intelligent about it. But it's still guessing. If, if the curve does this, or if the curve does this but then has a spike and then does this, there's not gonna be a lot of a difference and it's going to look like a just a straight curve to the AI algorithm because the image once the data is lost you can't gain it back you can't put data back that's already been discarded that's already been blended out you can't create the source data unless the destination like you can't go back to the source data if you have information and you throw away some of it, you don't get it back. If you have information and you expand it to be bigger, like bilinear or bicubic interpolation, in general, if you shrink it back down to the original size, it will almost but not entirely necessarily be the same as it was originally. Uh, depending on the algorithms used and so on, it, it will be a very close approximation to the original. But you can, you don't add data by expanding it. It just sort of makes up something based on the algorithm of choice. <clears throat> and these people, these forensic imaging experts in this courtroom are so stupid that they can't, or at least this one, they, they, they can't even explain what I just what I just explained to you on a sticky note. They can't explain that. And the problem, I think, is that the prosecution's expert witness is, they're trying to admit expanded information. The problem is if you expand it using certain methods like Langsos or Sync, they do this thing, it almost looks like a taffy pull between diagonal pixels. Um, it, it, it can cause upscaling that creates curves or you know other smoothness, other shaping that isn't present in the original image because the data is not there in the first place. There's no way to know what was there in the first place. Once the data's gone, all you can do is guess at what was there. And the problem is, it's one thing when you're looking at a full image on a TV and, you, and you've got plenty of stuff to look at and it just makes it look nicer to look at on the TV. It's another when you expand an image at this pixel level, you expand this pixel level image, right? Um, you, you expand everything, you generate fake data based on the existing pixels, then you pixel peep. No, what you're doing is looking at some algorithm's guess as to what should fill in the cracks whenever you want more pixels. That's not even remotely good enough for a court of law. Not even remotely. And this is, these people are so dumb, I'm tired of it. I just, I cannot sit here and continue to listen to these dumbasses butcher fairly simple computer imaging on the stand. This, this dude's a forensic imaging expert. He can't explain bilinear image interpolation. He can't even explain that. He can't, he can't explain the way I just did. What's wrong with these people? I hate, I hate this. I hate it when these people who are supposed to be experts there, there are so many experts that are so stupid, so incapable, so not 
experts. I mean, that's the truth is that you don't you don't become an expert by actually being an expert. You become a so-called expert by being recognized as an expert. I am an expert. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. These people don't know what he even said. I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. <sighs> okay. So, yeah. These people are dumb. I just this is this is what we settle for. This is what is meant by an expert. This is why I say appeal to authority has no exceptions because all experts, every last one of them, all experts can and are wrong about things and even in their field they can be wrong. <clears throat> experts if you you experts don't find facts by being experts. They're just better at guessing. And the problem is that sometimes they guess wrong anyway. And in this case, they guessed wrong. Um, or rather, this guy doesn't even know what to guess. He, he's like, oh, does it add colors? Does it add data? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't have an answer. Because the answer is yes! And that's not what the people who are paying you to be on the stand want you to say. Asshole. <sighs> now... It is true that you can increase brightness, contrast, you can apply gamma curves, S curves, whatever. You can apply gain and loss functions to change image data, and you're not throwing away data, you're just increasing the visibility of differences that are already there. However, with a caveat, there is often, especially in imaging software, there is often interpolation that goes into the levels of data when you do that. For example, if I have an image and it has a pixel that's uh, near middle gray but not at it, say the value is 126 instead of 128 in 8-bit RGB just for a particular color channel, the value is 126 and it gets brightened, um, or, or let, let's, let, no, let's use a different number, 127. Um, and it gets cut in half. Well, half of 127 is 63.5. It is going to chop off that 0.5 one way or the other. It's going to round up or it's going to round down. Um, truncate, floor, whatever you call it. So, there, to some extent, that is another issue with raising brightness and contrast is that you'll get quantization errors, potentially. But, software nowadays will work in higher bit depths internally and the final output will have the quantization error, but only after internal 32-bit, for example, depth processing, which has much more fractional data available to it, therefore eliminates quantization errors up until export. So, while it's true, it is true that changing brightness or contrast, you know, curves, whatever, hue, saturation, there will be some errors technical mathematical errors. For the purpose of analyzing something, the quantization errors typically are so low as to not matter. Now, if you take a bunch of freaking quantization errors, like say an image is almost too dark to see, but you brighten it up by like 32 times, which I've done before, <clears throat> and it brings out pixels that are invisible, um, then you're going to have big jumps between pixels. Then, on top of that, let's say you take that and resize it. Well, now you've introduced um, quantization errors and you've also done some kind of resizing, some interpolation that guesses at pixels. You're, you're basically, you, you can't add the data that's not there. It just, once the data's gone or not captured in the first place, it can never, ever be put back. No matter what you do, I just want to. I just. Mm, I just want to hit these people with foam bats until they tell me to stop. I, I, that's what I want to do because this drives me mad. These people are so stupid, and they are paid thousands upon thousands of dollars to get them on a stupid witness stand and say, I know what I'm talking about, and interpolation doesn't create new data. Even though, how do you go from a grid of a hundred pixels? each axis to 150 if there weren't 150 pixels in the first place 
All right, I'm going to go back to being sick. Like, comment, subscribe. You can financially support me using links to my website, Jody Bruchon, down below. Thanks, as always, for watching. Never trust experts because trust. Yeah. It's fine when it's a doctor and you just need a colloquial whatever, like, oh, I have a cold. It's not so fine when you're trying to find facts. Take care.